Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm your host, Sean, and today I'm gonna to take you on the glorious adventure of developing a coin flip app. It's one of the easiest things to develop in the coding world. It's just a simple, simple app, and I think it's gonna be really fun for those of you who are new to coding. So without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. Hey, what's up guys? So here we are, we have our Visual Studio open. Let's go ahead and create a new project. We're gonna choose a Windows Forms app with the .NET framework, and we're gonna call it Coin Flip Game. And then click create. Okay, so we have our blank form here. Let's spice it up a little bit um, and just change some of the basic settings. So let's go up here to the background and change it from this white to, I don't know, literally any color that you'd like. I'm just gonna go with this cool, nice blue. We're gonna rename it from form one to coin flip game. And then we're going to go ahead and copy that and then come down here to where it also says form one in the text field and then go ahead and click or type down coin flip game again. So that will actually rename our app. Another thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the form border style and change it from sizable to fixed single. This way the, the game or the app stays the size that we have it here and the users cannot resize it. And let's go ahead and just get some basic stuff out of the way. We're going to drag a picture box on the screen and make it fairly large because it's going to hold the image of the coin. And that's our, the centerpiece of our game. So we want to make sure that the users can see it. So kind of put it in the center as best you can. And we're just going to go and change the uh, properties on this one as well. So change it from picture box one to coin image. And then we're going to go down to this image here and click the little three dots and then select the image to put there. I have these images up on my GitHub that you can download or you can use your own coin images. But go ahead and import them. Go ahead and click local resource and import. Okay, now that we have imported our file, click OK. And you're gonna notice right off the bat that it is off to the side and we can't see the entire thing. An easy fix for this is we're gonna go ahead and go down to size mode and change it from normal to stretch image. This way the image is uh, compressed into the boundaries of the box and we can see the entire thing. Okay, so now that we've done that step and we have a cool coin here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and drag a button down on the screen and then make it as wide as the coin. And we're gonna change the text on it. We're gonna say flip. And then we're gonna change the font of it to whatever we'd like. Let's just choose something pretty cool. Um, doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, let's do this high tower text. Let's make it like size 14-ish. Eh, let's make it a little bit bigger. But it looks like a cool older style, like kind of colonial thing just like the coin style right so we're gonna have flip here and then we're gonna change the background of the button to instead of this back color of the background we're gonna just make it a white button so now that we have that out of the way let's go ahead and launch our app and just see how it looks so we have our app here and we can just see our, our nice image and we can click the flip button obviously nothing happens because we haven't set it up yet but I think I like where we are going with the interface so let's just go ahead and start with that and what we're going to do is double click on, or cl first click on this button. We're going to rename it from button one to coin flip button. And now that we've done that, double click on the button. This will automatically create a method for it in the back end. And then now we're going to do some of the fun stuff. Okay, so let's think about how we want to build this. Every time we click the button to flip the coin, um, obviously it's going to be heads or tails, right? We know that as people. But how does the computer know that? Um, the computer doesn't know the difference between the heads and tails image besides where it's located in the file system. The only way that this could work is we have to tell it how to work. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna to randomly generate a number, either the number one or the number two. Super simple, super random, right? Just like flipping a coin. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a random object. So we're gonna say random and then coin flip is equal to new random. So that will instantiate a new random object. We're gonna name a coin flip. And the next thing we need to do is have a number to store the result. So we're gonna say int coin result is equal to coin flip dot next. So the dot next method is what we want to actually generate the number. And then inside of the parentheses, we need to specify a range. So if we just leave it as next, it will generate any random number like at all. It'll be, it could be a billion. Um, but what we wanna do is either generate one or two. So we're gonna say 
in between the range of 1 and 3. And the reason we need to do 3 instead of 2 is because the first part, the number 1, is inclusive. And the second part, 3, is not inclusive. So basically, 1 to 3 in this next method actually means 1 and 2. So now that we have that out of the way, go ahead and add that semicolon. Now we will perfectly create a number 1 or number 2 every time that we click this button. Okay, now that we've done that, all we need to do is set up some simple logic. So now when we flip number 1, we want to show the heads image. And when we flip number 2, we want to show the tails image. So we're going to say if the result is equal to 1, we want to do some stuff. And then else, so if it's equal to 2, we want to do some other stuff. And you can go ahead and add some simple comments. So the result is heads. And then down here above the else, the result is tails. OK, so inside result 1, we flip the number 1. What do we want to do? We want to set the picture box image to be a heads image, right? So first, we need to reference the picture box on the uh, form. If you don't remember, go ahead and click on it. And then you can scroll up to the top. We named ours coin image. So go ahead and copy this and paste it. So we want to reference coin image and we want to change the image location property. And what we need to do then is say equals and then an at and a double quotes and a semicolon. Now inside of these double quotes, we are saying that this is a literal string. That way we can reference a file path and not have to escape every single backslash. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and reference the file path that we have our heads image stored at. Okay, so that's where I have my image stored at. If you downloaded my image, it's probably in your downloads folder. Or if you made your own image, you know, it could be anywhere on your computer. Just go ahead and find that out and paste the file path in here. And now the other thing we need to do is remember from earlier when we put the image as the property of our picture box and the image was all off to the side and you couldn't see the whole thing. We need to actually do one more thing to fix that because that will happen again if we don't address that problem. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say coin image dot size mode is equal to picture box size mode dot stretch image. So that's going to compress the image inside the boundary of the box, just like I said before. Now it's super simple from here on out. We just need to copy this and then paste it right down here. And all we need to do is change this from heads.png to tails.png. So now let's go ahead and start our app and see how it works. Okay, here we are, our app's running. So let's go ahead and flip. Okay, we landed a heads, now it's tails. And we can click clicking this and we see that it randomly generates a flip uh, of either heads or tails every time. And that's awesome, right? We have a working app. Now, what if we wanna take it a little bit further? Let's add functionality to track the stats of the current game. So let's go ahead and go to the top of our uh, class here and outside of our methods. So outside of our coin button flip method and our uh, public method here, let's go ahead and just create two integers to hold each value. So we're going to say int heads is equal to zero. And we're going to say int tails is equal to zero. So every time that we click the flip button and the heads result comes up, what do we want to do? We want to go ahead and say heads plus plus. We want to add one to the heads value. And the same thing for tails. So every time tails is landed on, we want to say tails plus plus. Now, not only do we want to do that, but let's display these results to the user so that they can see. So go back to our interface, go down and find where it says uh, label. So we have a label here. Drag a label onto the screen. Let's adjust some of the initial settings here. So instead of the text being label, we're going to say heads. And then let's scroll up and change it from label one to heads label. And actually let's capitalize that to keep things consistent with the other naming conventions. And then let's go ahead and change the font style to match our button. So that was these high tower text. And let's make it like a decent size, I don't know, like 12. So let's move this down, this button flip down a little bit and move this head up. And another thing that we need to do is click on the label and change the auto size property to false. That way we can size it however we want. And then also go down to where the text align property is instead of top left, just make it middle center. So now that will let us make this uh, as big as we want. And let's go ahead and copy that and paste another one over here. 
And instead of heads, we're going to say tails. And one more thing to do is we want to change the back color on both of them to match our button. So we're going to say uh, just a nice white color again. And then we're going to change the name of the second label to tails label. And then go to our other one here and make sure to make that white as well. And then let's make sure we have just a little bit of a gap so it looks a little bit better. Okay. So now that we have that, let's make sure that we have an even width button because that's going to bother me. So let me just adjust that. Okay, now that we've adjusted our interface, let's just add some simple logic to the back end to change these heads and tails labels to actually reflect what the current count is. So inside of our if and else here, if it lands on heads, not only do we want to plus the heads value, but then we want to update the label's text. So we want to say heads label dot text is equal to, and we want to keep the same text that we already have. So heads colon space, and then say plus, and we want to say, we want to add to the string, the heads integer that's keeping track of our value. And then since this is a text field, it won't accept raw integers because we're building a string. So we need to convert the integer to a string. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say heads dot two string with an open closed parentheses. And that should be it. Now, the only other thing to do is copy this line here, go down below tails. Instead of heads label, say tails label. And instead of heads dot two string, we're going to say tails dot two string. One more thing before we go ahead and launch our app, uh, change this heads to tails. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and launch it and see what happens. Okay, here's our app and we have our heads, our initial image. So let's go ahead and flip the coin. We flipped it, we land on tails, the tails value was updated. We flipped it again, it was heads, the heads value was updated. Now if we keep flipping back and forth, it's pretty even between the two. Sometimes some one of them pulls out in front of the other one, but overall it's about a 50-50 uh, percent chance every time. So this is awesome, we have a, a working app and hopefully you guys learned something. Um, if you have any questions or problems with the app, go ahead and comment down below. I'd be happy to help. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It will help my channel out a lot and have more people see this and, and just spread the knowledge. If you want more content like this, go ahead and click the subscribe button. It really helps me out. And thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.